Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Athar Azim, and I am currently employed in University of Sialkot as the Dean of the Faculty of Management and Administrative Sciences. Sialkot is a city of Pakistan, which is probably one of the biggest cities, uh, industrial city of Pakistan, and contributes a lot in the exports of the country. University of Sialkot is a private university, but it has a large number of student body and several programs are offered in various departments of this university. Today, I'll be talking about one of the study, which is a comparative study of the various multi-factor risk-adjusted return models. These are called the asset pricing models and in the dynamic regimes of financial crisis. The world has seen several financial crises and obviously whenever there is a financial crisis, it is a difficult time for investors and for the people of those economies where there is a crisis. The world has seen some global financial crisis where everybody was affected by that. In this study, uh, we have tried to find out that which ones of the asset pricing models are more suitable for which markets of the world. In this study, the emerging markets of three regions are taken and several multi-factor models are applied and the results are drawn out of that. Let's move to the first one where we will see the introduction of This is about the five different asset pricing models, including the most common, which is the capital asset pricing model, uh, which was introduced by Sharp and Lintner in the middle 1960s, and which is uh, taught and applied in several countries of the world, still as one effective model. Then the other one which is considered is the three-factor model, are given by Pharma in French in 1993 and then Carhartt's 1997, which was a continuation of that. In this three-factor model, in addition to uh, the risk premium, they also added the size and the value factor. So this model is also taken in this study. And then there were four-factor model where the momentum was added as another contributing factor to the risk uh, assessment. And then the five factor model, again, where, you know, other two factors, profitability and investment factors were added and the momentum factor was eliminated. But then in this study, a 10 factor model has been introduced. And in this 10 factor model, the two, which are the government bond risk and the commodity risk factors are the additional factors which are not tested before along with the other factors in these asset pricing models. The other three are the momentum, the liquidity and leverage. Uh, we have seen that how effective all these different models are in different regions of the world considering the emerging economies. Let's have a look at uh, the pre-crisis and post-crisis and, of course, the financial crisis period. And this study actually covers these three periods. So it gives us a very uh, fair chance to assess whether these models or which of these models are applicable to these different regions and different emerging economies of the world during these three periods. Because the pre-crisis period 
is certainly a normal period and the crisis period is the worst one and the post-crisis period is post-financial crisis period is obviously the one where the things were improving but there was obviously a gradual upward movement. As there are several economies, emerging markets are taken. So uh, the regions uh, which are taken, the three basic regions taken. So the panel data analysis is used, which is the most suitable type of analysis because the nature of the data, which is panel data. The three regions are Asia, Europe, Middle East, Africa, and the two Americas. So the findings of uh, these risk-adjusted return models are related to these three regions. The study is uh, very important if we consider the fact that investors would like to uh, know that which of those factors uh, are contributing more towards their return and which are the factors where they keep, need to keep their eyes on and which of the factors actually explain their returns more. So a combination of these factors are taken in these various models. The model proposed by the researchers, that is the 10-factor risk-adjusted return model, uh, is likely to explain the returns of investors in the emerging markets better than the more conventional ones, that is the CAPM or the three or four factor models. Now, these are the, the five empirical models which are used in this study. So the first one is the capital asset pricing model where we have got the risk premium as the only contributing factor. Uh, I'll explain uh, these variables on the right-hand side of our equations, the next slide. Uh, then Forma and French presented a three-factor model where they actually introduced uh, the size uh, and the ratio of high or low book to market value, which they call the value factor. So the size and the value two factors were introduced alongside with the risk premium as in the capital asset pricing model. And then the Carhartt model introduced the, the fourth factor, which was actually the momentum factors where we consider the winners and losers. And then came the five factor model where the uh, Carhartt's momentum was replaced by two other factors. And finally, the model which is proposed by us is the 10 factor risk adjusted return model, which is likely to provide a better explanation of the returns of the shareholders uh, and the investors in these selected emerging markets of the world uh, during, before and after the financial crisis period of the new millennium. Now let's have a quick look at the definitions of these variables. The first one, as I've just talked about, is the market risk premium, which is the difference between the market rate of return and risk-free rate of return, which is obviously then adjusted according to the slope of uh, the line, the curve. Then the second factor, which is part of our models, is the size factor, which was introduced by uh, the former in French, and this is uh, companies with a smaller market capitalization, smaller uh, in size in terms of their market capitalization, perform better than the firms which are bigger in size in terms of their market capitalization. So a difference of their returns is taken. And then uh, uh, firms with high book to market value and firms with low book to market value, again, it is observed that high book to market value firms perform better than those generally. So uh, a factor by taking the difference of high minus low, 
book to market value firms is developed. Then the third factor is the robustness. Uh, comparing the robustness with the uh, robust companies with the weak companies where we have got uh, the operating profitability factor. So this is that the firms which are more profitable are likely to be likely to continue in the same way as being more profitable as compared to the firms which are less profitable today or at the moment when you are looking at it. So then the investment factor was the next one that where the companies are putting their investments. Some of the companies, some of the firms are more conservative uh, in making their investments where they're likely to get lesser returns than those which are more aggressive. So a difference of that is taken in this variable, conservative minus aggressive is constructed. And then the Carhartt's momentum factor is taken here, which is the difference between the winners and the losers, the stocks whose prices are going up, less the stocks whose prices are going down. And the two more factors, which are then taken as the liquidity and leverage factors. Does liquidity play a role uh, in towards the return of the shareholders? This variable is taken. And likewise, does leverage the relationship of debt and equity plays a role? So this, uh, uh, this factor is constructed. And then the last two factors are, the first one is the excess return over government bond index. So if your government bond index uh, earns more than the risk-free return, then how much is the excess return? And over a period of time, this return is taken as a variable, as part of it. And likewise, the commodity index excess return, that if this excess return in commodity index is more than the market return, risk-free return, then this uh, is something which is to be considered in the model. So the methodology, uh, used in this research is the Pharma and French 1993's methodology where various portfolios was, were constructed uh, for all these markets, considering all these factors. And these country-wise portfolios were then merged into region-wise portfolios and results were drawn. For example, if we take the market risk premium, it was calculated by taking the difference between the monthly values of the market return and the risk-free returns for each year, that is T. And in three-factor model, uh, it required the construction of size and value, that is the market capitalization and book-to-market value. The data points relying on observed market capitalization and book-to-market values of T minus one the year before, that is the lagging, uh, value, the lagged value, and then the original value are sorted at the end of each month. Uh, the findings of this study are very interesting and very encouraging for the researchers that uh, the 10-factor model, which is, uh, as we predicted, will be more uh, effective and it will be more meaningful in terms of explaining the investor's return actually was very much like that. The findings of CAPM, which was the, the initial model, are not universal. However, the three-factor model of Pharma in French was most appropriate asset pricing model in the Asian markets. Again, someone has to study, take it further and see that uh, why Asian markets behave different from the other regions market, but these are the findings of this study. And then the five factor model uh, was more suitable for European, Middle East and African markets. Uh, even the though the 10-factor model was the second most appropriate model. So you can say that the significance of 10-factor model was also there uh, in, in the three uh, continents that is uh, part of the Asia, which is Middle East and Europe and the African continent. 
And finally, uh, for the two Americas, it's, uh, that is South and North America, this 10-factor model is found to be the most reliable multi-factor model, which is the most interesting and most uh, encouraging finding of this study that the model uh, suggested by the, invest uh, by the authors, by the researchers, uh, have actually uh, proved to be a better model for some of the most financially developed uh, economies in, in uh, the two Americas. And even in EMEA region, it was at number two. So uh, this is about the effectiveness and the application of these three models. Uh, thank you very much. And it was great talking to you. God bless you.